Hi Aquarius Sun and Rising. Welcome to your February 2021 Astro Update. It's Raina here. I actually thought that I had already done your reading. I think uh, maybe last month I did my astrology readings later in the month. I'm not sure, but it, it felt like I had just done yours and I looked and I was like, nope, I hadn't done, done yours. But I think because for January's reading, I titled it something like, um, it's all about you. And I was looking at, you know, February, I was thinking, wait, it's still all about Aquarius. It really is about you because there's so much in your sign that has to feel good on some level. But if somebody doesn't know about astrology, I don't know if they would necessarily pay attention to it. Probably on some level, they would know something was really up. But as we begin the month, we have, let's see, let's review. What do we have there? Well, Mercury is retrograding in your sign. So there's Mercury's in Aquarius retrograding. We have the sun in Aquarius. So uh, this is ostensibly your first house. I say that because uh, it does depend on your degree of sun arising, but we're just going to pretend everybody is the same. And uh, so we've got those two things happening, but we also have Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius. So that's four planets. Now, on the first of the month, Venus goes into Aquarius. So that's the fifth one. And, um, you know, this is great for you because uh, Venus is a very uh, harmonious energy. I don't say it's really good because Venus can sometimes make people feel lazy. They can make people feel complacent. They can make somebody overindulgent or superficial if they're just, uh, you know, trying to seek pleasure instead of uh, other things in life. So I don't, I don't like to just make things simplistic like that, but I will say that um, it can give you a lot. It can give you that indefinable aura or whatever you want to call it that makes you um, attract people to you. Venus is the attractor. So um, we talk about the law of attraction. Um, really, the whole idea of attraction is that you bring something to you. You're like a magnet. You can attract negativity, though, too, can't you? It's not just on the positive side that we attract. But the interesting thing about that is uh, people who are very negative, they actually repel others. So others kind of like, whoa, I'm getting away from this person, or I don't want to give this person, um, I don't want to help this person because they don't, they're not presenting themselves in a way that makes me want to help them. You know, either the temperament is off or just the behavior, um, and, or the aura, <laughs> but this gives you an aura that is very much agreeable to others. And so they want to help you. Venus can indicate popularity. And so that, that can always be helpful in one way or the other. And that, that can be like uh, helpful if you're looking for a job and you're trying to impress somebody. Um, even though we don't have to impress anybody, that's not our goal in life is to impress people. Sometimes we're, um, trying to make a case for ourselves. So when you have Venus in your own sign, uh, and in that first house, it, it can, it can carry over into just how you carry yourself and all of that good stuff. You may be trying to actually actively improve your appearance. I don't know, maybe get a haircut or do something different, but, um, things like that. And if you're looking for love, the same thing on the 11th, we have a new moon in wait for it, Aquarius, 23 degrees of Aquarius. So your new moon of the year. And we, you know, what things would you like to bring into your reality? You have Jupiter and Saturn to help you to achieve these things. So you're not, a, it's not just the new moon that is going to just be there and then leave. You're going to have, um, Jupiter and Saturn opening doors for you, helping you to, uh, become more grounded when it comes to uh, this area. This is the first house, so it can encompass anything that is new and exciting in your life. On the 18th, the sun goes into Pisces. 
So for you, that's the second house. And that can indicate, you know, new um, money matters that uh, that you're taking care of or that opportunities that can come your way to make money. It's It all depends on individual uh, Aquarius, sun and rising people, like how this is going to manifest for you. On the 20th, Mercury goes direct in Aquarius. So, yeah, I mean, I should mention about the Mercury retrograde. Um, this may have been a period where you've been kind of assessing something in your life as a whole or in something to do with you uh, and how you present yourself. If we look at it just strictly from the first house perspective, you know, do you like the way that you, do you like your look, you know? And even though that, yeah, it is superficial, if you're in some kind of a work situation where your appearance is part of it. See, right now, <laughs> in contrast, I'm sitting here on my bed. I have this really cozy, I don't know what you call it. It's kind of like a fleecy uh, sweater. And it has like, the pocket is just full of holes. But I'm not going to throw it away because I just love this sweater. And besides that pocket, and it's so wearable. I have Taurus rising, so I love soft things. Okay, so I don't have to, and 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 uh, and yeah, and my my jogging pants have you know bleach, um, you know discoloration, and and it burned through and created holes, and I'm just putting them on because you know I'm at home. I don't I don't care about that, um, and I'm still doing this work, you know. Um, that's one of the, the benefits of not being on camera is you can look whatever you want. You can look like the cat dragged in or the cat dragged in. And now in your case, that might not be the thing that is true. That doesn't make you superficial, but you, let's say you're in sales and you want to have a certain image that you feel is going to, um, make people trust you more make people more, um, cooperative with you. Aquarius, if, if Aquarius is your rising sign in particular, you may have tattoos. I, I think tattoos is the norm. So maybe it's not having tattoos. I don't know. But you know, you may have this desire, this penchant for wanting to dress in a very unique and, uh, or, you know, express yourself in terms of your physical appearance. Like maybe like one of those nose piercings that goes through like both nostrils in and it's sticking out, those metal things. I don't know what they call them. I was just watching somebody on YouTube who had one of those. And she was a cute girl, a cute young woman. But it was just so distracting because she has these things. And I kept thinking, how does she even get that in her nose? But anyway, <laughs> um, even if other people misjudge somebody because of how they look, it is what it is. And you might say, you know, maybe you're going through your first Saturn return and you're saying, you know what, I don't need to express myself all the time through how I look. I don't need other people. I don't need to like advertise the fact that I'm a nonconformist. And I really, and I really want to work in a school system or I really want to, you know, maybe you want that kind of a straight job and you really like that type of work and you feel like it's holding you back to show your tattoos or whatever, or maybe even there's no way you can get rid of them. So you have to go and get them erased, um, you know, to conform to some dress code or something like that. And you're willing to do it because you really, um, are so into that type of, uh, profession. And if it has that kind of a, um, code, you're, you're thinking about doing it. And it's like that idea, am I selling out, you know? So I'm just giving that as an example. Uh, but anything in your life that you're reconsidering, you come to some uh, decision and this will be ongoing until March 13th when Mercury comes out of its shadow. So even in the shadow period, you might still be a little bit up in the air. On the 25th, Venus goes into Pisces. And... Um, you know, that is, again, that second house. Venus rules this house. 
So we, we can consider that more significant because uh, that just increases the influence of Venus. It kind of doubles it. And um, this may be the time when you splurge on a big ticket item that you have been wanting that, you know, this can be your possessions. This can be luxury items with Venus. That is even more possible that that's something you're going to do. And on the 27th, we have a full moon at eight degrees of Virgo. So, um, Virgo is your eighth house, if I'm not mistaken. And the eighth house, a full moon here is very powerful, emotional. Uh, it might shake you up a little bit because you might discover something about yourself that you kind of kept, um, you know, under lock and key that you don't want to think about. It's a shadow. Now, this will be particularly potent for those and, and relevant for that eighth house if you're born between zero and eight degrees of Aquarius. If you're born from nine to 29 degrees of Aquarius, it's likely going to fall in your seventh house of committed partnership. So kind of like a Leo, the Leo forecast. I mean, um, um, for um, the Pisces, because um, that's um, the opposite sign of a Virgo is Pisces. So that forecast is going to be kind of similar, but because you're at a later degree, it's going to um, fall in this seventh house. And that could be emotional, too, from the standpoint of relationship issues. So, you know, it really can be the extreme. It could be if a you know, relationship is on shaky ground, maybe this is like the final, um, the coup d'etat. No, that's wrong, coup de gras. <laughs> wrong French phrase. And uh, so anyway, that kind of thing of like, okay, in, in some revelation comes out, you know, secrets come out or you or the other party just like, you know, says your feelings and it just, it ends. For other people, it can be that it strengthens your relationship. It takes your relationship to the next level because you might realize very strongly that you want to commit to this person. This is a house of commitment. But commitment isn't something that is easily done, even when people actually commit. They're not always um, fully there. You know, they might be kind of one foot out the door. So this could give that, that full sense of commitment to those people. It could be actually very romantic. So anyway, this is a very interesting month. I think overall this is really great for your um, whole, you know, life to move forward because you have a new moon in that first house along with all these other planets there. So it really is emphasizing, Aquarius, um, you putting yourself first, if, especially if you have had a tendency to be, um, you know, much more willing to, 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 to uh, allow other people to have the upper hand in, in certain ways. And maybe you did that, um, because you wanted to, you weren't forced to, but you wanted to, but you realized that you neglected yourself. If that is the case, this is the year for you. And it's interesting too, because when there's a full moon, um, that means that the sun is opposing, uh, it in the, from the first house in, you know, in this particular type of a forecast. So, um, certainly that could be the case, you know, from Leo, um, and so on and so forth. So it really does highlight your need for, uh, honoring your own path as opposed to the other person's. And that may make it easier for you to kind of let go and let them, you know, continue on their path. And maybe it doesn't have to be permanent, but it's, it's something that might need to happen for you to feel that sense of autonomy. 
Okay, that's what I have for you. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Thanks for listening. Bye.